66. The Jets and the Dolphins. They produce memorable results from storied stars and Hall of Fame coaches. Today, 2003 becomes part of one of the NFL's most spirited rivalries. The Jets have had the Dolphins number of late, winning nine of the last ten games and five in a row here at Giants Stadium. Miami won the toss. They will receive Doug Bryan, the new place kicker, replacing John Hall. Hall, one of the Jet skins that migrated south to Washington. Charlie Rogers, newly acquired for the Jets, and Travis Minor are deep. And this to the five, Rodgers. 20 and barreled into it, the 23-yard line. Number 52, Kenyatta Wright. Jay Fiedler takes the field, played his college ball at Dartmouth last week in the loss against the Texans, had three touchdown passes. Veteran Tim Ruddy anchors the offensive line, and in the backfield, Ricky Williams, who led the league with over 1,800 yards a year ago. Fiedler. Well, he's had a good record as a starting quarterback, is only one and four against the Jets. Williams trying to find a hole, picks his way for three to the 26 yard line against Gang Green. And here is their defensive starting lineup. John Abraham, what a sack master he has had two against Washington. Veteran Mo Lewis has led the team in tackles um, many years, three times a pro bowler. And Donnie Abraham, he's a ball hawk, led New York in interceptions of four picks a year ago. Herman Edwards in his third year. First time in Jets history, a coach has taken the Jets to the playoffs in his first two seasons. Up the middle and wrestle down after three more yards. Ricky Williams, Sean Ellis led the charge for the Jets. Number 92, Sean Ellis in on the tackle. Williams leading the league last year, Dan, and all five of the top rushes were from the AFC. I guess that means they don't play very good rush defense <laughs> in the AFC. Of course, you know, when you don't have to go against Philadelphia and Tampa Bay on a regular basis, that's a help. Crowd very much alive on third down and four. Four wide receivers. Fiedler's first pass, a quick out. What a catch! And it is Darius Thompson on the sidelines and into Jets territory at the 48-yard line. Oh, Aaron Beasley, the cornerback to that side, really gambled. He took a large, watch this, he's got the coverage on Thompson, and he has a great break on the ball, but for some reason decides to just grab Thompson from behind and scoot right on by. Look at him, he's really upset with himself at the conclusion of this play. And by the way, no catches last week for Darius Thompson. We were told by the Dolphins, we really want to get him the ball early, get him involved in the offensive mix. He speared that one. He had 53 catches as a Redskin a year ago. First down at the 47 of the Jets. Fever on first down, no one open. Outruns Jason Ferguson and takes it out of bounds at the Jets 43 for a gain of four. He's run out of bounds. Well, Jay Fiedler, nobody can say he's not going to take a look at every part of the field. There he's looking to the right, nothing there. Now comes back to the left, nothing there. And this is always what he does well. He can move. The Jets secondary just smothered everybody down there, with the exception of that guy who's wide open. <laughs> <laughs> All except for Chris Chambers, who's standing there all by himself. I think that was when we saw Jay Fiedler looking to the left. Second down six. 
Williams hit hard after a short yardage again to the 41 yard line. It'll bring up third down and four. Sam Garns up from the secondary to help out on the tackle and uh, hopefully pick up a loose ball. Has it been the best of weeks for Dave Wanstead? Uh, that loss uh, to Houston was not taken very well by the residents of South Florida. Newspapers, the talk radio shows, uh, I best that Dave didn't read or listen to anything last week. He was on the hot seat. You see, they haven't started 0-2 in 15 years. Neither team wants that on their back after today. He goes long down the sidelines. Great defensive coverage on Chris Chambers. And he wanted a flag as Donnie Abraham had him in a blanket. You talk to Donnie Abraham, he tells you, I love being a complete corner. I can cover, I can tackle. Incidental contact, but notice the key, both looking back to the ball. They're both playing the football. That is just sensational coverage by Donnie Abraham. Number one yeah. cheerleader is Chad Pennington. He's out till about uh, mid-November with that fractured and dislocated left wrist. Santana Moss deep as Mark Royal's punt floats inside the 10. Trent Gamble covers at the four-yard line. Jets have the ball when we come back. Vinny Testaverde, 3-0 as a Jets quarterback against Miami here in this stadium. Curtis Martin in the end zone with Wayne Prevent in motion, and it's Martin. And he draws a crowd of Dolphins after a one-yard gain. Tim Bowen's 325-pound tackle down low. Then he only 105 yards of production through the air against the Redskins and that 16-13 loss. Kevin Mawai, many times a pro bowler, anchors the Jets offensive line and Curtis Martin eight years, eight times over a thousand yards rushing. Anthony Beck, the tight end in motion. The pitch to Martin, he almost juggled it. Hangs up and barrels across the 10 to the 12. Three yards shy of the first down, Sammy Knight up from strong safety to make the tackle. And here is that talented Dolphins defense with Jason Taylor, 18 and a half sacks a year ago to lead the NFL. Junior Seau migrates from San Diego with his Pro Bowl credentials to Miami. And Sam Madison, one of a very talented back four for Miami. Junior Seau, 12 consecutive Pro Bowls. Said the biggest problem in adjusting to a new city, new defense was the humidity in South Florida. We'll have more on that. He said he had to lose a lot of weight. Third down short. And down the middle and Crabette wide open. No one covered Crabette, and it's a first down at the 37. Well, the Jets put three receivers to this side. Wayne Corbett was working closest to the line of scrimmage. I think you can see Terrell Buckley, number 27. He was taking a look. He had to do an immediate U-turn and try to catch up. And Vinny, wisely seeing that he had a guy all alone. The only bad news there is he didn't hit Wayne in stride where he could have kept running. Corbett had to come to a complete stop to make that catch. Nevertheless, 25 yards, the longest play in the Washington game was 17. First down at the 45 to Curtis Conway. He beat Sam Madison. Conway, one of the big pickups for the Jets in the free agent marketplace. And a guy who only had a couple of catches last week. And again, they'd like to get Curtis involved here in the Jets passing game. And Vinny delivers a perfect strike. And at 39 years old, I think he demonstrates there, there's still a little zip left in that right arm throwing the deep out. Conway was Dave Wanstead's first draft pick as a Bears head coach back in 93. After an 18-yard gain and down the middle and another first down. Conway again. And Testaverde, three consecutive strikes. And they're all three working on Sam Madison. And this is not what the Miami Dolphins were expecting defensively. They thought there'd be a lot of hesitancy on the part of the Jets as far as letting Vinny throw the football, that it would be Martin, 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 again and again and again. And look how Vinny has opened up this game. 
And yes, uh, pretty lofty numbers there. Anytime you have more than twice as many touchdowns as interceptions, you're doing very well. is caught in the backfield by Wale Ugale, the defensive end from Indiana. And he was not fooled a bit. It's a big loss. Well, like Jason Taylor on the other side of Gunley, he really has tremendous speed. And even as Santana Moss, one of the most dangerous open field runners in the league, there are two quicker defensive ends on the same team in the league than Wally Agunle and Jason Taylor on the other side. This is some quickness they've got going upfield. Agunle well, tags the Jets with an 11 yard loss, so second and long. Three wides. And the coverage from Sam Madison. Boy, you got all this momentum going. You got everything working for you. The mojo is there. Three straight completions from your creaky quarterback. And then what happens? You run a reverse and get killed. <laughs> That's why they call them trick plays. You can trick yourself. Man, talk about a pin in the proverbial balloon. Those three completions in order were 25, 18, and 14 yards from Testaverde. Third and 21. Curtis Martin slotted out and now in motion to the inside. And the flags fly. A lot of finger pointing going on down there. Jay Williams uh, appeared to jump. Was he drawn offside? Encroachment. No. 91. Defense. Still third down. Well. Part of this, Vinny, Vinny really takes a little mini step. The old, the old guy drew him off. Watch Vinny's right foot. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know that's that's illegal. <laughs> Vinny could have been the guy called for inducing the Dolphins offside, but the old boy got away with it there. <laughs> it was halfway between that attempt to start yeah. motion and yeah. pulling away from center. Yeah, that's that was enough to warrant uh, being against the Jets. Third and 16. This is a spot where Miami will use his own. They're playing a zone. Sertan letting him go inside, hoping that Brock Marion, the safety, is going to get over there in time. But finding that hole, and yes, there is the emotional leader of this football team. He may be hurt, but he's still leading. First down at the 12. That was 25 yards. Curtis Martin in motion. Testa Verde hit from behind, and it's incomplete. Throw Buckley was the closest to there as Jason Taylor around the corner nailed Testaverde as he threw. Well, from behind, Jason Taylor gets a tremendous break on the football. Fabini went for the cut and didn't get him down. And Vinny has no idea this is coming. And you can see before he releases the ball, if that had been a half a second earlier, that ball might have gone straight up in the air where somebody could have intercepted it. Dolphins were tough in the red zone against Houston. Four times, no touchdowns. And Lamont Jordan hit as he caught the ball, and he goes down for a loss. Madison slowed up the play, and there was Zach Thomas and Jr. say out to finish off the hit. A loss on the play. <laughs> That whole that whole thing predicated on the slot receiver being able to get out there and pick off the corner. It's a it's a timing play all the way. See from the inside, you see Conway coming out there, but he can't get the Madison quickly enough. Just a brilliant play by Sam Madison of coming up and attacking a play. If he'd have sat back, that'd have been a big gainer for the Jets. Four yard loss, third and 14. Only a couple of yards as Terrell Buckley had him covered well, and that'll bring on the field goal unit for the Jets. But the good news for the Jets passing game is that with only a 17 yard pass, the longest against Washington on that drive, Testaverde had 25, 25, and 18 yard completions. Yeah, Dick, regardless of whether Doug Bryan converts his field goal or not, that has to be an uplifting experience for the Jets' offense, and especially number 16. 
30 yard attempt by Doug Bryan, the putter Straczynski to hold. Right down Broadway. Herman Edwards gets have the first points of this game. Take the lead here in the opening quarter with 5:15 left in the period, three nothing on Doug Bryan's 30-yard field goal. That capped a long drive. They moved it 83 yards in 12 plays, mostly on the arm of Vinny Testaverde. That's Charlie Rogers. He has three kickoff return touchdowns in his career, picked up from Buffalo as a unrestricted free agent. And it's Rogers at the nine. Tackled at the 29 yard line. That's where Jay Beaver and the Dolphin offense will put it in play. Jets lead it 3 0. Pretty good first drive, 82 yards compared to a total of 105 passing against Washington in their opener in D.C. Jay Beaver. The more and more as a passer, at least that's the game plan, and he gains about six. Two brothers, one kid, no grown ups. Charlie Sheen stars in the new comedy Two and a Half Men. That'll premiere Monday, September 22nd after Raymond on CBS. The Dolphins that last play took a page out of the Rams playbook with Marshall Falk running him out and then splitting him out as a wide receiver. That's what they did with Ricky Williams that time. That gets a lot of guys on the defense pointing. Second and three, Williams hitting the backfield, breaks the tackle, and picks up the first down at the 40-yard line. Three-nothing, Jets in the Meadowlands. Jim Nance, what do you have for us? All right, a quick hit here by the Buffalo Bills playing down in Jacksonville. Dick and Dan, 49-yard drive. Travis Henry from a yard out. They're driving again, 7 nothing down at Jacksonville. Bills in front. Back to you two. All right, Jim, and the Bills apparently picking up where they left off. Huh? Uh, what an impressive performance last week in that 31 nothing route of the Patriots. <laughs> that was some scene at Ralph Wilson Stadium. Talk about talk about crazy. They're ready to rumble, huh? Well, that's uh, Jason Line Ferguson invading the offense and Johnny Greer. Encroachment, 72, defense, first down. Penalties unusual for the Jets. <laughs> Let's get another update in New York. All right, Dick, this one comes from Baltimore. Ravens and the Browns, they didn't even get settled in their seats here before the Ravens struck Jamal Lewis right up the middle, and he is going 82 yards, longest run from scrimmage in Raven history. It is 7-0 Baltimore, and they are driving again after a fumble recovery by Ray Lewis. Back to you, too. I watched the Ravens and the Browns, and I think to myself, Aren't they the same team? <laughs> My God. <laughs> well, so former Browns, and you know that uh, the fans in Cleveland, just looking at that Raven uniform, are going to give it a little extra for the, the new Cleveland Browns. Oh, as long as uh, Art Modell is involved with the Ravens in any capacity, that will always be a big game in Cleveland. Meanwhile, with four minutes left in this opening quarter here in the Meadowlands, Ricky Williams stuffs after maybe a yard gain. It's second down and a short five. They have to penetrate Jets territory for a first down. Again, Ricky Williams out to the right. And then they screen it to Rob Conrad, and the fullback has a first down at the Jets' 46-yard line. Sam Cowan made the tackle. Uh, good call by Norv Turner, the offensive coordinator of Miami. You know, everybody's looking at Ricky Williams, not expecting Rob Conrad to be the guy to run the screen to the inside right. You can see the Jets defensively completely caught off guard. And actually, three guys are in front of Marvin Jones, and nobody blocks him. If, Mar if Marvin doesn't get through those three guys, that could have been a big play for Miami. First down, Dolphins. Two possessions. Twice they moved it into Jets territory. Fiedler just gets it off. And complete to Chris Chambers at the 24. It appeared that the ball was intended for Randy McMichael, the tight end. He leaped up, couldn't get it, and it goes over his hands and right to Chambers, his teammate. Well, did he get... Watch the hit right there from John Abraham. Just a millisecond after Jay Fiedler releases the ball, and we will have a. <laughs> Where was this one headed? <laughs> Take your pick. 
They certainly had the receivers lined up. Was right. that McMichael's ball <laughs> or was that Chambers' ball? Chambers, who had a brilliant game last week against Houston, seven catches, two touchdowns, one spectacular touchdown catch. On first down, Ricky Williams to the 20. Oh, he had some open area tripped up by Sean Ellis. Well, let's go back to that catch, Dan. You were even raving superlatives about this one. Well, Chris Chambers last week in the back of the end zone. Watch it. Jay Fiedler throwing the ball away and getting that second foot down. And I, I think that's in the top five of all catches I have ever seen. It was a spectacular. It's, getting the second foot down was the best part of the catch. You see you guys stab it with one hand. But somehow he was able to drag that back foot. An emerging big time star is Chambers, who played at Wisconsin, a run offense team. McMichael, the tight end, with a catch and a first down, first and goal at the nine. McMichael, who started brilliantly as a rookie a year ago, and then in the last half of the year wasn't quite as productive, but he came up with 39 catches out of. Uh, University of Georgia last season. Uh, Randy McMichael got the first down for the Dolphins that time and then signaled first down in a little bit of an unorthodox way. Uh, taunting is something that everybody's really looking at hard this year. One more time with that one, Randy, and I think you'll get a flag. Triple right. Conrad then in motion to the inside. And the fake to Williams. Fiedler on the roll. He's going to run it himself. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Absorbing a big hit from Donnie Abraham and Chris Chambers blocking in front. And Fiedler has his ninth rushing touchdown as a Dolphin. That ties the team record. Well, the Dolphins don't think that the Jets have a lot of speed in the middle of their defense. And Jay Fiedler told us yesterday, we're going to do a lot of misdirections and bootlegs. Well, there's a classic look at a bootleg. And taking advantage of the misdirection, you could see the Jay Fiedler surprise nine out of the 11 members of the Jets' defense. But boy, you got to like the guy that puts his shoulder down like that to get into the end zone. Mare hooks it a bit, but it stays true. And the Dolphins <laughs> take the lead 7-3. to three. That was Zonka-like from Jay Fiedler. The Brooklyn Bridge, and it's unbelievable. A guy, it was a good price, too, said it was for sale. I was over there the other day, and he actually wanted to sell that thing to me. If I'd had it in my pocket, I'd have gone for it. Well, I'm assuming he wanted cash. <laughs> <laughs> Guys like that don't take checks. <laughs> Seven to three, and that's Donnie Abraham. He's shaken after the tackle of Fiedler. Mare's kick is fairly short. And down to Michael Bates, the newest jet. He's got a hole. And Bates wearing number 20. That was uh, Chad Morton's number before going to Washington. And he found a big gap and a good return to the 37-yard line. 30 seconds left. Opening quarter. Miami by four. And somehow he rolled over his ankle or something. You can see him grab for it. And Jordan had to be helped over to the Jets sideline. And they also lost Corey Campbell, number 53, who was down on the field for a couple of minutes. So a costly return for the New York Jets. Chris Baker, a late arrival into the offensive line. And Testaverde on first down throws complete to prevent a gain of about five in front of Sam Madison. That should take us to the end of the quarter as Quebec with another catch. He leads the Jets in catches, and he's only four away from tying Al Toon for the number two spot all time in Jets history. Toon finished with 517. Like Vinny told us, I need to work with Moss and Conway. I know number 80. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the first quarter. The Dolphins 7, the Jets 3 will return to Giant Stadium after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. On the kickoff return after the Miami touchdown. Curtis Martin. Met in the backfield, fights for a yard across the 45. Patrick Sertan up quickly to support Jason Taylor. 
Tackles by number 31, Brock Marriott. Donnie Abraham was getting attention over on the Jets sideline. You can take a look at that right there. And I, I Dick, I think that actually was on the uh, collision with Jay Fiedler at, at the goal line. And that's uh, Donnie Abraham, uh, boy, sure showing some signs of discomfort. And whatever it is, they want to send him inside and have a look with an X-ray. Third down, a short three. Martin. Oh, met in the hole by Junior Seau. Seau stops him for a yard loss, and the Dolphins will force the Jets to punt. Now, 14 years in the National Football League for Junior. Uh, there's been no diminishment of his enthusiasm over no, those years. He is passionate. <laughs> He's excitable, passionate. Number four, Absolutely Jesus nothing Jesus. there for Curtis Martin. It's stacked up at the point of attack, and then coming in from the weak side with Seau unblocked. Curtis had no chance. Dan Straczynski to punt it to Charlie Rogers back at the 12. They call him the hangman for that reason. High, high, high. Fair catch at the 21 yard line. You don't return many of Straczynski's punts. That one was for 34 yards. Lamont Jordan also came up lame on that kick return. Meanwhile, Ricky Williams using that speed that can't quite get around the corner as John McGraw, the second year safety from Kansas State, came up to make the tackle. All right, now how about you folks out there? You're down by a touchdown, two minutes to go. Which of these active quarterbacks would you want in the huddle? Barr, McNabb, Gannon, Manning, McNair, Bledsoe, or name your favorite. Cast your vote at NFL.com. Wow, how the mighty have fallen. Kurt Warner doesn't even get in that top six, huh? Bad week. <laughs> Miami out rushing the Jets, 34 to a minus three. Second and long, and Fiedler to throw. He's going long for Chambers, and he's got another catch to the 36 of the Jets. Oh, this young guy is something special. Well, how about this? Ray Mickens is a guy that has to take the place of Donnie Abraham, and Norv Turner goes right after him with big physical Chris Chambers. Watch Chambers going to get a little there with the left hand, holds Mickens back, and frees himself up to make the catch. That's a subtle little move by a receiver to create a little separation that offensive guys get away with a lot more than the defensive guys. 39 yards yeah. on the play. He looks much taller. He's only 5'11", but has a 44-inch vertical. On first down, Williams for a yard. 12 minutes to go in this first half, and the long play sets up the Dolphins with a lead 7-3 into a least field goal range. Second and nine. Fiedler with the pump. Scramble. Room to run. First down and more. Doesn't take on any defenders there. Ducks out of bounds with a first down at the 22. But that was a play designed to go right after Ray Mickens again. The pump and go. But Mickens was all over it. He, he was giving some ground. And Jay Fiedler realized he had nothing. And oh, what a little present this is. The entire left side offensively wide open. 14-yard gain for Fiedler. After a nine-yard touchdown scramble to give Miami the lead. Ray Mickens right now saying, hey, wait a minute. This is my eighth year in the league. I, I've been here a few times. Ricky Williams stop starts Bulls down to the 16-yard line. And a solid gain on first down. Sam Coward finally dragging him to the artificial turf. Not all really good runs end up being highlight material. And there's a run that looked like it was going to be stopped for no gain. It looked like there was absolutely nothing at the line of scrimmage. And Ricky turns it into a six-yarder. And what a luxury it is in this game to have a second and four. All sorts of options at that distance. He has 28 yards and a half, one more than Fiedler. On second down, Williams again. And he's to the... 13 yard line that's going to be near first down territory John Abraham down low to make the stop. Number 24 Ray Mickens and number 94 John Abraham in the tackle. He, he likes playing in his own doesn't division. It, doesn't yeah it? that's the home cooking here. Although it's not so bad to average 100 yards a game against everybody else but to knock it off for 136 and a half. Uh, 
Talk to the Jets. They all tell you one thing. We don't want 34 coming straight at us. Somebody rerouting, getting going a little bit sideways, but when those pads are turned upfield, it's frightening. Now he's an avid photographer. It told us that he has his own dark room. He's got all those tripods, the big lenses. And I said, do you have any photograph that was so good you put it up on your wall? Interesting answer, wasn't it? He's a tennis fan. He's a tennis fan. He said he got a great picture of Serena Williams at, uh, at a tournament. He loves wearing that dark shield, by the way. He likes the fact that defenders can't see his eyes. Short yardage, third, and you saw about a half foot. And it's Williams. He plows and loses the ball fumble at the 10-yard line, and a scramble. A flag is down as well. But the more important issue, who's got the ball? The Jets say they do. No official signal yet. Yeah, wait a minute. The green stripes don't count. Only the black and white ones. Ricky had a disastrous fumble last week against Houston. Oh, my. Oh, it appears they did recover the fumble. Miami got it. White dog. Offense. Still third down. Williams got his own fumble. Here it is again, Dan. Yeah, on second and four, he's got a crease off right guard, and he gets upfield. But, geez, you could see just from off the ground, Brian Thomas, Brian Thomas stuck a hand up there. Boy, uh, the ball shouldn't come loose on a little thing like that. That, that was hardly what I would call a, a jarring hit. But give Ricky credit. He's one of the guys down there at the bottom of the pile fighting for this football. How did he ever get it? Was I, it? I don't know. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> The bad news, the Jets lose field position on the penalty. The good news is they still have the pumpkin just outside the 22. The pumpkin. Well, we're getting, you know, we're moving into that time of the year. Yes, we are. Although I can tell you, with the humidity today, there's no frost on it. Not here. Time out. Nice to see blue skies rain most of the weekend, and there are showers in the forecast. 9.04 left in the half. Miami leading 7-3. to three. They've uh, rushed the ball in a much uh, more effective manner than the Jets. That's the big difference. And they look at third down and 11 at the Jets' 22-yard line and go with uh, three wideouts. Keep your eye on Chambers far to the left. Top of your picture. Oops. Pulling off the line of scrimmage, Todd Wade. That'll cost the Dolphins five. Ball start. Number 71, offense, third down. This Miami offensive line is full of tongue twisters. There's Wade right there, number 71, way early. But he's Todd Wade. The guy next to him is Todd Perry. And then on the other side of the line, starting a rookie, is Wade Smith. So we got <laughs> some t multiple Todds and multiple Wades both first and last names but it's good you mentioned Wade Smith the rookie from Memphis number 74 playing left tackle a little undersized at 297 but doing a solid job against the tough pass rush of the Jets where have we gone that he's undersized at 297 and third and 16 the draw to Williams look at that speed and he's pushed out of bounds at the 10 yard line and it appears he has the first down he does Sam Garns finally got to him. And Sam Garns loses his helmet, and Ricky never even goes to the ground. This is just awesome running ability. A draw play that's supposed to hit between right guard, and where does he pick it? By getting all the way around the corner support. Now, there aren't many guys that weigh 230 pounds like Ricky Williams that has this kind of explosiveness getting to the outside around corner support on a draw play. Yeah, That's you, extraordinary. When you see that number of those moves in that body, you think of Earl Campbell, don't uh, you? Or Jim Brown. Yep. Here's Williams again into the pile to the eight-yard line. But you're right. The lower legs make you think of Earl Campbell. He's such a modest, mild-mannered, 
athlete as he comes in and talks to you. He's uh, full of confidence now, and he said that's the big difference between uh, being in Miami and being in New Orleans. He said you sometimes you just even when you lose, you expect it to win, so it's not so disastrous. I asked him if he was aware of what he's doing. You know, some guys just do it. He goes, "Oh no, I, I like having that rushing title on my mantle." Yeah. And he said, "When I come home on Sunday night, I check out what everybody else did. I'm competitive in that respect." Here he comes out wide again. Second down and eight. The throw complete. Touchdown. Tight end Randy McMichael. McMichael's first touchdown of the season. All set up. This is the way Norv Turner runs things. Remember the first time that that Ricky Williams is out wide, they threw him the ball. But then the next two times they put him outside, the ball goes to somebody else. And this time it was Randy McMichael's turn to get the touchdown. But again, all off of the same look with Ricky Williams splitting all the way out and playing wide receiver. Mare adds the extra point, a nine-yard touchdown pass Fiedler to Randy McMichael completes a 79-yard drive. McMichael now officially an eight-yard touchdown catch from Fiedler, who has the other touchdown on a nine-yard yeah. scramble. And there is Norv Turner studying hard. He has to feel pretty good about how his game plan is going. Well, you draw it up like that, and, and, and when you get the desired results, it's a, it's a sense of satisfaction. That formation of splitting Ricky Williams out to the outside has really brought some early results home here for the Dolphins. It's uh, really set up, and that's what they work on, setting things up. You know, people go, what are these offensive coordinators doing? Don't they have any idea what's happening out there? You know, a play call on Sunday was uh, maybe uh, thought up in June. Bates and Jordan, and it's a line drive kick by Mare through Jordan's hands. Remember, he came up limping on the last uh, kick return, but he is okay and takes the touchdown for a touchback for the 20-yard line. This week on CBS Survivor Thursday, the new castaways think they have time to prepare for the game, but we're throwing them overboard with just clothes on their backs. It's the wildest Survivor yet. Don't miss the 90-minute premiere, Survivor Pearl Islands, this Thursday on CBS. So what's the big deal? Just hey. go with the clothes <laughs> on your back. That's the kind of way we do it here. Sportscasters. We get dropped off on Friday and with the clothes on our back. And <laughs> Man, no one ever. You, know, you always got a seat empty next to you on the flight yeah. home. That's why we have fans up here in the booth. Things are starting to get a little right. <laughs> At the 20. The Jets now trailing 14-3. Testa Bernie open his Quebec. And he has the first down, skipping out at the 31. And let's go to Jim Nance with this update. All right, thank you, Dick. Another update from Jacksonville. And the Bills, Travis Henry now has four touchdowns on the season. It's 14-0 Buffalo, second quarter. Back to Dick and Dan. Wow, Buffalo now 45 to nothing so far on the season. Greg Williams has it all going on there in Buffalo. Good looking team. Curtis Martin rushing game has been zero thus far for the Jets. First down from the 31 the fake to Martin the throw complete to Bett and the tight end struggles out to the 35 yard line and we go down to B square. Well Dick it looks like Vinny Testaverde's gotten all that rust off after not having started for a year or so but he said there's so much more than that and it's some of those things we never think about. He said think about how tiring it is just to get back to the line on time or how tiring it is to bark out cadence 50 or 60 times a day. Tack that on to the fact that he's got his 40th birthday coming up. It takes a little longer to get things going these days for Testaverde. Well testament to how well, he's weathered the storm. He'll be the fourth oldest. He is the fourth oldest quarterback to start a season in NFL history. Well, at least since 1970. Vinny had a great line when we visited with him on Friday. He said, I'm so old that when I go to the opposing sideline after a game, I shake hands with the coaches. Because they're the guys I all played with. They're the old timer. Warren Moon's the oldest ever to start a season in Seattle. Johnny Unitas, when he finished his career with the Chargers. Zeke Bratkowski following uh, Bart Starr in Green Bay. And now Vinny Testaverde, a few days, well, a couple of months really away from his 40th birthday. There's Chad Pennington eagerly waiting for that left wrist to heal. 
incomplete, and Testaverde had to get rid of it as he was being wrapped up by Jay Williams. And that was a rare miscommunication between Vinny and Wayne Krebet. He had Wayne sitting right in the middle as his safety valve, and Wayne ran a zig when Vinny thought he was going to run a zag. Vinny, under pressure, had to get rid of it. Just one of those things, under pressure, things happen. Dan Straczynski to punt. And now, Dick, the pressure is going to be on the Jets' defense. Charlie Rogers at the other end of this high spiral, and he calls for the fair catch at the 15-yard line. Miami with the lead and the ball, 542 left in the half. Staten Island Ferry making its Sunday move. Governor's Island. 14-3 Miami and the Dolphins with the ball. Last week uh, the Jets first possession 72 yards against the Redskins and a touchdown then it had only 86 yards the rest of the game. Same thing today a big 83 yard drive to a field goal first possession 21 yards since. Ricky Williams the workhorse for Miami nothing much there. Well Herman Edwards knows Dick that if he's going to beat Miami it can't be in a shootout. He didn't come into this game thinking that they could win 31 28. They're not going to score that many points against this Miami defense. Uh, if they're going to have success it's going to be 13 10 17 14. Well they've already spotted the Dolphins 14 points. And that's when I said the pressure is really on the Jets defense now because if they allow the Dolphins a couple more scores you really have to wonder if the Jets offensively are capable of scoring that many. Williams the handoff. Patiently finds the hole into the open at the 35. To the 40 yard line before Abraham and Coward can track him down. Boy, you said patiently. Excellent call. What a look at patience by a running back. Ricky, look at him, stutters a couple different times, waiting for his lead block by Rob Conrad to appear, and then the explosion. A lot of running backs, boy, it's almost like sometimes you think they got their eyes closed. They just go up there and hammer away whether there's a hole or not. Beautiful piece of running by Ricky Williams. Travis Miner replaces Williams and Miner from Florida State. He gets good yardage all the way out to the 50 yard line and appears to have what might be a first down as we go down to Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Dick, injury updates for the Jets. Donnie Abraham is out. He's got a shoulder injury. Ray Mickens will continue to take his place. We'll see if Miami continues to throw at him. As far as Kerry Campbell, he is out as well with an ankle injury, predominantly, as I said before, used on special teams on kickoff and kick coverage. Thank you, Bonnie. Well, this far today, and Herman Edwards would not like to hear this statistic. Well, there you can see it as well. Zero yards rushing for the Jets, 112 for Miami. And now without his number one corner and Donnie Abraham. Mickens playing the left corner. Minor gets a couple into Jets territory. As we remind you that Saturday, the conference season begins with a big time doubleheader. First, Casey Clawson and the Volunteers take on Deshaun Wynn and the Florida Gators. Then, David Green sparks the Bulldogs against Mad Muck and the Tigers of LSU. For more, go to CBSSportsLine.com or CBS Sports Line on AOL. Michigan did come out with a rather impressive da, win against da, 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 da. The Chippewas had a big win yesterday. 42-41 over tough oh. Eastern Kentucky. We're floating up here. <laughs> Fiedler. Mickens has position. And boy, Chambers oh. fighting McGraw oh. and Mickens for it, and he gets he high above the crowd. Jay Fiedler almost looked like he was throwing that to Ray Mickens. What a job by Chris Chambers to, to break this up. Play was broken up by number 38, Chambers uh, was not expecting the ball to be this far. He gets in there and he, boy look at him elevate and there's that 44 inch vertical leap you were talking about. Look at him get up in the air and get between McGraw and Mickens to break that up. That was uh, what a leap by Chris Chambers. Third down and seven. This is one of those must uh, times early for the Jets. They can't afford Miami to go and score again. Draw from the quarterback Fiedler, and he does not make it. He's a yard short of the first down at the 42-yard line, and out comes the punting team, Mark Royals. Well, that had to be a busted play. I, I, 
I, I can't uh, I can't think that that was uh, I guess uh, I don't know maybe it was I mean Jay just planted and went but that's that's a great way to win the second game of the year but that's not necessarily necessarily the recipe to having your quarterback still under center in uh, October November. flag is down as Royals kick fair catch Santana Moss at the 17 it appeared that one of the Dolphins left the line of scrimmage early. It's the other way first around, down. and that's a first down for Miami. As Michael Bates lined up offside, apparently. Herman Edwards with that what expression. And uh, the Dolphins happily uh, accept the gift to the 37-yard line. And a gift it is. Oh geez the last thing in the world the Jets needed to hap have happen was a freebie for the Miami Dolphins in their own territory. Let's check it right here. Let's see if somebody doesn't come out yet. You see how they fell across. So Jay Fiedler and the Dolphins with 210 left in the half. First down at the 37 leading 14 to 3. Ricky Williams back into the game and gets a yard. And one can't help but think back with a score 14 to 3. How about that fumble at the 10 that was recovered by Ricky Williams? How big was that? And he's fake to here, and then Fiedler throws back to him, and he's in the clear at the 20. And out of bounds across the 15 at the 14 yard line. Ooh, and Ricky is went down awkwardly, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Not bouncing up. People fall off of Ricky Williams like he's covered in Vaseline. <laughs> it is. He makes people. We're gonna <laughs> take a look at this. I, that's not even close. You're gonna have to get a bigger hit than that. And boy, you see it when a guy gets pulled down from behind. And Marvin Jones, I don't know if he's got his hair or his jersey, but man, he got his leg caught very awkwardly underneath him. Ooh, that's uh, boy. You see running backs, and that's a little like how Priest Holmes got that's hurt right. last year. That's right. Travis Miner comes in for Williams, and he getting one of his rare chances, trying to take the most of it, is inside the 10-yard line. Miner, 205 pounds, out of the same high school in Baton Rouge, California, or Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as Warwick Dunn, Dunn. Uh, and uh, Miner both wearing number 28. And I'm sure that uh, Warwick was an influence on Miner matriculating at Florida State. And they feel uh, they've got a nice one two punch as Ricky Williams gets a breather and and Miner takes over. He stays in on second and four a minute ten left in the half. Inside the five and then finally pushed back as he hit the four yard line very close to the first down a reminder coming up on the next Dell halftime report we'll join Jim Dan Dion Boomer all of today's scores and highlights stay with us coming up the next Dell halftime report Ricky Williams comes in minor does his good work for a couple of runs short of the first down third and about a half yard and the Dolphins still with two timeouts left uh, even though we're down to 30 seconds they've got time to stop the clock. Fiedler on the sneak picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. You got to call a timeout guys. <laughs> and they do with 22 seconds left before halftime. On second thought maybe the, the, the Dolphins should have shown a, a little more giddy up and go there because with only one timeout left. You know they got a full complement of downs but only 22 seconds on the clock. You know if they don't get in here they're going to have to take a timeout and then all of a sudden they're a little jam. Makes you think pass doesn't it. But they're going to toss it to Williams. And Williams has another touchdown. But then they knew they were going to do that so that didn't matter. <laughs> and they had Ricky Williams in yeah. that backfield. What a player he is. Todd Wade the right tackle leading the way. Just a crushing display by the Dolphins offensively behind the power of Ricky Williams. And sometimes uh, you could just see that when he took that pitch at the five yard line. 
to they might, the points. officials might as well might as well put up their hands when he was at the five yard line signaling touchdown no way he's not going to get it Mare with the extra point so Michael Bates offside on the punt costs the Jets seven points game plans but they really like it when it produces a 71 yard drive for a touchdown a 79 yard drive and an 84 yard drive three Miami touchdown scores today and do you know what all offensive coordinators really love what the NFL's leading rusher in their backfield <laughs> yeah, my the doesn't it get simpler when you've got Ricky Williams as an option on every play yeah, he uh, at times is a man among boys Lamont Jordan and Michael Bates. The Jets have only 17 seconds. Mare dribbles one down and through the wickets of Bates, who's had a rough first half. And the Jets will take it at the 20. The good news is they didn't spend any time. How about Ricky Williams, the former Texas Longhorn out of San Diego High School? Well, showing a lot of versatility, power between the tackles, the ability to bounce it outside. There he showed just brilliant patience in setting up the run and his receiving skills. Ricky very proud of the fact that he's lost a lot of weight, and he said, I did that expressly so I could be more of a factor in the passing game, and he is. Again, it's to Curtis Martin, and they uh, give the Jets a plus yards for the first time and since the kickoff. And, and the, the crowd boo. No, that got come on now. What do you expect Vinny to do? Chance an interception or something? Take it, go in, try to get organized at halftime, and hope that Ricky Williams slips on the tile. <laughs> Let's go to Bonnie Bernstein. Herm Edwards, a tale of two very different running games. Let's start with Ricky Williams, seven, eight yards already. How do you slow him down? Well, we got to tackle him. Uh, we, we had him contained for the first quarter, and then all of a sudden he broke a couple of big runs, one on third down, one here at the end. And, and what they're doing is they're getting big plays. And when, they, when you can get big plays, running the ball and uh, passing the ball is tough. Now, what we got to do is regroup at halftime and keep playing because right now it's a lopsided game, and they're, and they're putting it on us, so we got to play better the second half. And for your team, Curtis Martin, you wanted him to get the ball more, zero yards rushing for your squad. Yeah, you're right. We don't have any yards, and we're very, very predictable at this point. We're throwing all the time, and you don't want to get into that because they got two good ends that can knock the quarterback down. So we got to compete a lot better in the second half. Coach, thanks. No touchdowns in five quarters for Herm Edwards' team. He trails the Dolphins 21-3. Back after a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. together enough to compete with this talented Miami team. Michael Bates takes the kickoff and the knee and it'll start at the 20 yard line. Let's take a look at the first half statistics. Statistics. Last three home games uh, against Miami they've outscored the Dolphins uh, big in the second half. We'll get those halftime statistics for you. Jason Taylor and the Dolphins dig in as Testaverde starts from the 20. To the sideline and complete to Curtis Conway and a flag down in the secondary. Patrick Sertan on the play against Conway, but the flag was in the middle of the field. 
Well, outstanding pass protection for Vinny. He was able to stand back there, really survey the field. They'll take the 15-yard pass play called against Junior Seo was the illegal contact. There it is, the nine yards uh, basically coming uh, at the end of the half. Well, when you only have nine yards rushing and your opponent has 136 at halftime, you're in trouble. You are in trouble because that means they're dictating the pace of the game. They're keeping the football. That was a good play for the Jets, though, a good opener. Now Curtis Martin caught in the backfield and dropped for a two-yard loss. Tim Bowen's the big man submarine to get a hand on it. Buddy? Dick, interestingly enough, Dave once said, usually a pretty animated guy. Completely the opposite. Very businesslike coming out of the locker room. Didn't want to talk about shutting down Curtis Martin or the progress of his offense. He said, I didn't have to say a word in the locker room. My guys did all the talking, and they know they need to get the job done. They don't want to start 0-2. They haven't done that since 1988, their last losing season. All right, Bonnie, uh, once at uh, 11 and 5, 11 and 5, 9 and 7 in his three years. Underneath the throw, and it's complete to Crebet. Terrell Buckley, a uh, fifth defensive back there on the tackle. Dan, how about the, five, the, the kind of power, interception power, this Dolphin defense has? If you add Buckley to the four starters, Buckley has 45 picks, Knight 28, Madison 26, Marion 25, and Sertan 18. That's 142 interceptions by those five men. That is an astounding number. Excellent mathematics work there, Dick. Well, I had a minor, you know. That was good. Tough, tough at Central Michigan, but I minored in math. And interceptions? <laughs> <laughs> there are a few of those. Almost one there as Sammy Knight acquired as a free agent from New Orleans had his eyes on his first interception as a Dolphin. Well, these guys operating the secondary for Miami will tell you that uh, a lot of their picks came because of the great pass rush up that they're getting from the guys up front. That was just perfect timing by Sammy Knight. He got there at the exact moment the ball did. The nope. Jets had one good play, but now they got to punt it away. Straczynski. It's a beauty. Wobbler down to Charlie Rogers at the 24-yard line, and again, no return. Timeout for a couple of minutes into the second half. Miami enjoys a 21-3 lead. And uh, you saw after punting their first possession, rolling out those long drives, 71-79 and 84, consuming a lot of time and plays to take the 21-3 lead from their own 24. And it's Ricky Williams across the 25, a gain of two. And headlines in the first half for the Miami Dolphins. Jay Fiedler, eight for 10, plus a tough nine-yard scramble for a touchdown, and Ricky Williams pounded for 78 and a score. And What's not to like about Chris Chambers? Yeah, only a pair of catches, but they were big. And his talent, his, boy, it is nice to watch a kid blossom the way Chris Chambers is now for the Dolphins. at the 46 and Ray Mickens is going to have to go back and pick up his uniform. He's no longer blossoming. <laughs> He's in bloom. <laughs> what? Wow. Uh, what presence of mind and body control to have all that outside momentum and with one plant of his left foot be able to react back like that into the end zone. That's remarkable body control. You don't see that every day even at, even at this level. 19 on that play, 80 yards on three catches. He's got 10 catches, first two games of the season. Now Williams outside. And he staggers along the sidelines where he step out of bounds. Appears right before midfield at the 49 of Miami. John McGraw over there to make the tackle. Well, the Dolphins have notoriously uh, been hot early and then had trouble in December 28 and 9 this is uh, since 92 October record almost two wins to one loss November above the 500 and then December and January have caught up with them now you try to put a spin on the tough loss to the Texans last week that well maybe that's going to reverse this thing and we're going to be much tougher in December but uh, Dave Wanstead had wanted little of that he, he was about as serious as we've ever seen it. 
Ricky Williams to the 48 of the Jets leaving Miami three yards shy of a first down. It's one of those things where it is what it is and you can only talk about it for so long but the Dolphins have to do is just correct it. They have to win in December and January until then there's no getting away from it. And they've got to win when they have the lead. Last year they had they had the top uh, numbers in the AFC. They were nine and five going into those last two games Minnesota and New England and had the lead and couldn't hold it. And last week. Same thing. Third and three. Incomplete intended for Darius Thompson broken up by Aaron Beasley That ball was back behind Thompson. I thought that was going to be a relatively easy completion Thompson was wide open It's a little bit low and behind him, but it did go right through his hands But that that's not where Jay Feeler wanted to place that football He definitely wanted it a little farther to the right into the midsection there's a dangerous man, Santana Moss, returned two punts for touchdowns a year ago. This one a wobbly spiral. He'll fair catch it at the eight-yard line. Flag is down, and it's against Miami, I believe, for holding. So that would give Moss another chance and maybe a returnable punt. Oh, you definitely make them kick again. Remember that same group of guys that had to sprint down there. Now they have to do it again. Holding number 50 of the kicking team will penalize and replay to our fan. Brendan Iambadejo, the two Iambadejos, the fullback and a linebacker, this young man from UCLA. After the games, you can log on to NFL.com and watch video highlights of your personal fantasy team. Get it exclusively at NFL.com or on America Online. Enter keyword NFL.com. You see some good returns sometimes on the second punt. This punt coverage team a little winded. They just had to do a 40 yard sprint under the sun. Moss average 16 and a half and this one almost blocked. Can't get through the second wave and has stopped it around the 23 by Brendan Iambadejo. Now give Miami credit. Outstanding coverage after almost having it blocked. Ooh, that was close. Welcome back, Giants Stadium. Tomorrow night, the Giants host Dallas and Bill Parcells. A lot of rumble around the big city about Parcells coming back with the, the stars on the helmets. Busy uh, weekend here at the Meadowlands. Big soccer game yesterday. Jets today. Giants tomorrow night. Good thing they got this new turf. Yep. Anthony Beck, the tight end for three. Junior Seau with a tackle. Going well out the huddle here. Second down and seven. Martin finds a hole. And it closes in a hurry at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and three. But I like I like the no huddle. Paul Hackett saying, hey, let's just try to get something happening here. That's Paul right there in the center of your screen and the offensive coordinator. We've got to get a little enthusiasm here, even if it's got to be generated from the boot. And he fights for the first down out to the 39 yard line. Arturo Freeman making the tackle. All right. That's a rare third down conversion for the Jets. But this is smart. Shake it up. Try to make something. Do something. And now, of course, they're going to go back to home. Well, they started that series. Yeah. Miami took out Greenwood, the linebacker, and put in Buckley. So they saw the two linebackers and figured, let's go to some quick passes or runs. Now, uh, Miami gets uh, the men they want on the field and they're still going with uh, two backers. Say Alan Thomas. Quebec. He fumbles or is that an incomplete pass is the call at the 50. Oh what a hit by Sammy Knight on a collision course with Quebec. This was this could have been an explosion. Wayne's got the ball. Sammy Knight goes right to the football. And the question is, did Wayne take two steps? Now, in the NFL, you got to come down and clearly demonstrate that you have the football. What a play by Sammy Knight. 
Right on the football. He put his helmet right on the ball. That was really well done. New Orleans for six years, 28 interceptions. Screen it. Oh, my. Terrell Buckley as if he were in the Jets huddle all over that screen to Curtis Martin. Terrell Buckley not at known as one of the great jackhammers on defense when it comes to the running game. But he comes up here even on this short screen. He's got to play it. He's got to be there and make the tackle. Oh, TB, get up. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, Buckley, uh, he's been around, and everywhere he plays, he makes big plays. Sometimes gives up some, but he's a big play defender. Since they drafted Santana Moss, the plan has been to get him the football in space and let him take advantage of his open field running ability. He really spins past Sertan around, then Brock Marion has a shot at him, but somehow he doesn't go down. That looks like Marion was going to tackle Moss for sure. But this is what the Jets so desperately need, a playmaker. Make something happen here. If they can get this in the end zone, they're alive. First and goal from the nine. The fake to Jordan. Then he runs out the room, tries to throw it away just before he steps out of bounds, and it is an incomplete pass as Jason Taylor hawking Testaverde to the sidelines. That pass to Moss was good for 61 yards for the Jets. Second and goal at the nine. But everything about Santana Moss, at least now at this stage of the game as a receiver, is the yard after the catch. They want to get Moss the ball because they know he may not be Jerry Rice as, as a receiver right now as far as the kind of routes he runs. But oh, when he catches it, look out. It was his longest play as a Jet. 47 was the prior number. Martin slams to the five-yard line. It'll be third and goal from there. Curtis Martin, those eight consecutive years, a thousand yards. Only Barry Sanders has done better than that. His first ten years, Sanders gained a thousand or more. But one has to wonder what does that take out of a running back's future? See what he's done since '99. And by the way, this is a spot on the field where Lamont Jordan is normally the guy that does the heavy lifting for the Jets, and he's not in. Martin in. It's at the six-yard line. Empty backfield. The throw to Martin. And a defensive play is a beauty by Arturo Freeman. Extra defensive back there to make a sure tackle at about the three yard line. A tough call for Herman. This is a tough decision now to go for the touchdown or kick the field goal. They're going to go for the touchdown. I think Herman's saying, I. I need I think the plus here outweighs the negative. Yep. I need a big play and by God if we don't get it at least we try. They spread him out. And it's incomplete. He overshoots the tight end Anthony Beck. Rob Burnett was coming hard from a defensive end spot. That's that play needed a moment to develop and the Jets gave up pressure right up the middle right into Vinny's face. Manhattan and the Jets fans disappointed they were close but stopped on fourth and goal at the three so the Dolphins take over on downs and Ricky Williams to the four maybe a yard. Let's go back to that fourth down play Dan. Yeah we're looking at right from behind. Watch to Vinny's right. That's where he's going to start feeling some pressure. He does initially have a really good look but then he's he's throwing to a spot and somehow the ball just sails on him a little bit. Anthony Becht was a guy he was trying to get to but he was really pretty well covered by Sammy Knight and a nice check by yeah. Zach Thomas kind yeah. of bumped him off his route. Fiedler quick throw. Chambers, tough catch, and a first down across the 15. Whoa, Chris Chambers is making an announcement 
between what he did last week and what he did this week is he is the guy that's going to replace Aronde Gadsden as the number one receiver for the Miami Dolphins. This ball way behind him. Look at him go back, spin, pivot, get back upfield. This guy is uh, this guy's just a third year player. Catched four out of six, or caught four out of the six passes that have come his way. Had a hundred catches oh. his first two seasons and kind of was hiding behind some others, but now he is the man on first down. Fiedler complete. Is it a fumble? If it is, the Jets have the ball. They're calling it what? No, they're looking at each other now. They say incomplete pass. Randy McMichael had it for a moment. Well, what's good for the goose? <laughs> Yeah, Remember right. last possession, Wayne Krebet got hit and the ball came loose and they ruled it incomplete. Same, same kind of call. He had one step. That was, this is closer to being, I think that's a completed pass. <laughs> it looked like he had one foot down. And there is the red flag from the Jets sidelines. It was a tough call. You could see the three officials the were on the play. The problem here is that the whistle blew. You know, the whistle, when you rule it on the field, an incomplete pass, the whistle blows. It doesn't matter who recovers this. You, you, you're not going to get any satisfaction here. This isn't reviewable. There is no challenge on the play. Yeah, Johnny Greer went over and explained to Herman that, Herman, you can't review this. There's... We ruled it an incomplete pass on the field. The whistle blew. Thus, anything happens after that is just irrelevant. But wasn't that a, a, a really a terrific way of handling the situation by the referee Greer? It, the way he announced it, there, you know, he didn't have to explain and get the crowd all upset at whatever. He just said there is no review on the play. So fans disappointed. The play goes on at the 16-yard line. That was quite a hit by Jamie Henderson. Here comes Ricky Williams. And down he goes after short yardage again. When I looked at that the second time, it looked like the one foot was down when possession happened, and then another step was taken, still having possession of the ball. That by rule is a is a completed catch but then again imagine how difficult that is to do down there on the field for those officials when it's happening at lightning speed see right here possession left foot down right, right foot, foot down yeah yeah I, I think that's a catch but pretty hard to hammer the guys in the stripes when that thing happens at hyper speed third down seven But Garns comes through on a blitz, and it's Williams on a screen. Hit at the 26 27. That's right at the line. Sam Coward and others in on the stop. Sean Ellis, piece of him as well. Ricky taking his uh, good old time getting up. He's uh, he's working a little bit today, but if the old adage is the more you touch the ball as a as a back like Ricky Williams, the stronger you get. Well, we're going to see. This was good hustle by the Jets defensively, getting back in and letting the pursuit come back in from the inside. And the other thing too, Dan, was Garns' the safety was coming in on the opposite side on a blitz, so that really yeah. opened it up. That was a good call against the defensive call, and it earns a first down. He on the Sopranos, and now gets his own series on CBS. That's a good deal. Acting is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Fights his way out to about the 32 yard line and boy he's not only a handful he's a mouthful he using that left arm as a jab to clear his way. Well this was a good piece of work by Jamie Henderson who was left out in the flat and all of a sudden finds himself in a one on one with Ricky Williams again Ricky Williams trying the inside bouncing to the out but right here it's nobody but Henderson and Williams and uh, that's a that's a nice piece of work by Jamie Henderson. Hog tying him and running him out of bounds. Anderson in there because of the injury to Donnie Abraham. He left in the first half with a shoulder injury. Williams spins close to another first down, and that'll put him over the 100 yard mark for the afternoon. 
Folks, Monday on The Late Show, Dave welcomes actor Colin Farrell, and later this week, don't miss Kate Hudson and Chris Rock. It's The Late Show with David Letterman. He celebrates 10 great years on CBS. First down by Eddie from their own 37. Ricky Williams just took himself out of the game. I need to rehydrate. <laughs> he has earned his uh, keep today, hasn't he? 23rd time in his career. Ricky Williams over 100 yards rushing. Screen to Rob Conrad. And the fullback's out close to the 45 yard line and a gain of about eight on first down. Sam Garns, uh, the Bronx, New York native, makes the tackle. And this is what good football teams do when they have the lead. They pound the rock at you. They run nice conservative passing plays, but they execute. They move the chains and they gobble up the clock. Here we are. We're having a lightning third quarter, which of course is not good news for the Jets trailing 21 to 3. And again, the Jets seeing their opposition with many more plays, plus 15 for Miami. That's been a problem for three years for New York. Travis Miner has a first down at the Jets 47 yard line. Coward and Garns collaborate on the stop. Yeah, if you're the Jets, not only do you give up the first down, your reward for giving up a first down is here comes Ricky Williams back into the ball game. After getting a couple plays off, the Dolphins get a first down without him, and now you get a dose of the big guy again. He was uh, such a superb high school star in San Diego at Patrick Henry High School. Not only as a football player, but he ran the 400 meters. He was an outstanding outfielder. He played four years in the minor leagues. Phillies drafted him. And a heavyweight wrestler. He said that helped him, too, as a runner. He gets his balance from that experience of grappling with a heavy opponent. And he's wrestled there for a one-yard gain. Gave a little heavyweight size away to Mo Lewis. And uh, one of the big guys Lewis, inside, Jason Delta. Ferguson. You could hear that crack all the way up here in the press box with Ease. That was a, a big hit. Three time Pro Bowler Mo Lewis. There's Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator for the Jets, just trying to figure out what do I have to do to get my guys off the field? What kind of a scheme do I have to run? How many chances do I have to take? And the clock ticks away the final seconds of the third quarter. Dolphins 21, Jets 3. We'll return to Giant Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Look back across the Hudson River. Shots from the Saturn Lightship. The team on the Saturn Lightship hopes you're enjoying a unique look from high above the Meadowlands. Well, the fans enjoy that. Uh, Unique look at a hit of Fiedler and a fumble, and they take over the Jets at the Miami 48. Trailing 21 to 3 early in the fourth quarter. Vinny down the middle to Corbett, incomplete. And what a hit by Brock Mary and a flag down at the spot where Testaverde threw the ball. There is no infraction on the play. There is no infraction on the play. All right, let's go back and take a look at this. This is outstanding hustle by Sean Ellis. Watch Sean Ellis. There he is, number 19. He gets hit right there. Does he quit? No. Dig, 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 and he finally catches up to Jay Fiedler and knocks the ball loose. Nobody told Sean Ellis that the Jets were losing, and maybe I ought to take it easy. And Chester that McLaughlin was, falls on the football. Yeah, that was some outstanding work by Sean Ellis. Lamont Jordan with his jersey off on the sidelines for the Jets. Shovel pass to Jordan. 45 yard line. Hogan Lay makes the tackle. Apparently that wasn't Jordan on the sideline. From Premiering Thursday on CBS, the new survivors think they have time to prepare. They're wrong. We're throwing them overboard without warning and with nothing but the clothes on their backs. So get ready for the wildest survivor ever. Survivor Pearl Islands premieres this Thursday at 8 p.m. on CBS. Tell you what, a gun lay is becoming an awfully nice compliment to Jason Taylor. Underneath, complete. Conway has the first down. Well, this is a lot of work for Curtis. He starts clear on the opposite side of the field. Runs that drag route right across underneath. 
That is always where a wide receiver has to break tackles. You're only going to catch the ball maybe four or five yards up the field. It's all based on breaking tackles. Passing chart for Vinny Testaverde. He's picking all the zones, isn't he? Testaverde down the middle. Come oh, through the hands. Santana Moss. Right there. Terrell Buckley covering, but Moss knew knows he should have had that one. If that's the second play of the game, maybe it's not that big a deal, but all mistakes are magnified in the fourth quarter. He was aware of the fact that Terrell Buckley was right behind him, but geez, that Vinny couldn't have delivered it any better than that. 13 31 left in the fourth quarter. Jets desperate for a touchdown here. Second and 10. Gerald Soul, a fullback, and it doesn't do much as Patrick Sertan and Jason Taylor had it surrounded. Soul, who has replaced Richie Anderson, and it was interesting yesterday when we talked to Jason Taylor, that was the name that came up. It wasn't just Lavernius Coles, but he said, you know, they really miss Richie Anderson. He did a lot of things that made it tough on our defense. Well, Richie Anderson did a lot of the little things. He was a good blocker. Of course, everybody knows him as an excellent receiver, but he's a guy that didn't drop the crucial pass. If it was anywhere near Richie Anderson, he caught it. Third and long. Going on, open. Touchdown, Santana Moss. Well, nobody remembers that first drop now. <laughs> what a strike by Vinny Testaverde. The old man can still chuck it. Working on the outside, Sam Madison got, oh boy, what a move. Vinny spun around, Santana put a little juke on him, and what, uh, that is just a superior pass by Vinny Testaverde. Unbelievable. 32-yard touchdown play. Doug Bryan adds the extra point, and there's still life pumping in the Jets' veins. 48 yards for the touchdown after the fumble recovery. Moss, in fact, his career high, 123 yards on four catches. That last one for 32 and a score had a 61-yarder earlier. So 21-10 and plenty of time. 12:42 left in the fourth. Brian tees it up. Travis Miner and Charlie Rogers deep for Miami. There's Rogers. Has two lifetime career touchdown returns on kickoffs. Not this time. Brian belts it deep into the end zone. Touchback. Touchback. Now it's up to the Jets defense. Come back from the 20, Miami. Ricky Williams, a gain of four on first down. This Jets crowd alive after Santana Moss grabbing that 32 yard perfect throw from Vinny Testaverde to get the Jets their first touchdown in uh, more than a game. Reminder this is the first game of our doubleheader today, New England, Philadelphia. Those te two teams know the losers 0 1 2. Denver, San Diego. The Raiders host Cincinnati next on CBS. Well, you'd think the Jets would have eight people up in the box. They're sitting there with seven. They smell pass and they got it. Ricky Williams in the flat. Well covered. Third down and three. You'd think after Ted Cottrell, he took a chance and he he sniffed something out. You'd think they were going to have Ricky Williams come again, but take a look at the Jets secondary. They got four guys deep. They were thinking pass, and that's what they got. They were able to fly to the football. Marvin Jones, a veteran, over to make the tackle. Yep. Third and three, 11 and a half minutes to go. Crowd on its feet. Empty backfield. Fiedler, quick throw, incomplete. 
There he is, oh. Thompson, and a very, very late flag is thrown. A very late flag. Pass interference, 23, defense, first down. Jamie Henderson, it took a long time to find the flag. You see him lined up right there, working to the inside on Darius Thompson, and yeah, he got, he was all over him. And by the way, did that penalty get Norv Turner off the hook a little bit from some second guessing? You got Ricky Williams, you want to eat up the clock, you want to protect the lead, and you pass on both second and third down when it was only second and five? Now first down after the penalty, and Williams threading his way to the 35-yard line. Tough three yards earned, and the clock continues to wind. Down near 11 minutes to go. Sundays this fall on CBS, Catherine Moore stars in the next great crime drama from CSI executive producer Jerry Bruckheimer. Don't miss the premiere of Cold Case. That's two weeks from tonight, right here on CBS, right after 60 Minutes. Dolphins break huddle. Ricky Williams, a solo back with 111 yards rushing today of the 173 for Miami. And he gets the call. They've got him, Sam Coward. Somebody has to make the big play, and Sam Coward, the outside linebacker, gets upfield. He chose his gap correctly and comes up with a big play. Sam Coward, the guy who said, I went to Florida State because I wanted to be Marvin Jones. And here they are playing side by side on the same football team. Third down, 13. Under 10 minutes left in the fourth. They get it off just in time. Fiedler with a pump. Great coverage. Now he throws. Incomplete through the hands of James McKnight who was struggling along the sidelines, tried to make a one-handed grab. Oh, Dave Watts, that was screaming. He wanted interference called. He thought Ray Mickens wasn't playing the ball and interfered with his guy, but Mickens did a good job at the last minute of turning his head around and playing the football. That was good coverage by Ray Mickens. Well, the incomplete pass stops the clock. 9.40 left, Santana Boss. He has the hot hand for the Jets. Mark Royals, the veteran, who is a number eight all time in number of punts, spins one to Moss at the 31. And he's well covered at the 36. 9.28 left in the fourth. The Jets have the ball, trailing by 11. And welcome back. Dick Henberg, Dan Deodor, Bonnie Bernstein here at Giant Stadium. The Jets trying to come back from a 21-3 deficit. Herm Edwards' team has the ball back at their own 36. Testa Verde with three wide receivers. And Curtis Martin in the backfield. Actually four wide for Bet slot right. Gives to Martin. Slams out to the 43-yard line. Good gain on first down of about seven. Zach Thomas, the tackler. A formula that a lot of people like to use against the Dolphins, spreading the field with wide receivers and then going ahead and running the football, trying to negate some of that speed by going straight at them. You get your running back going parallel to the line of scrimmage, you're not going to run away from this Miami defense. For Bet and Moss to the right. Curtis Conway to the left. Second and two. Complete Saul, the fullback. First down at the Miami 49. Let's go to New York and Jim Nance. All right. Thank you there, Dick. And Buffalo's pulling away from the Jags. They just scored a couple of touchdowns in a short span. This was the first one. Bledsoe to Eric Moulds. Travis Henry just scored his third of the day. And it's 35-10 with one minute to play third quarter. Back to Dick and Dan. All right, Jim, and uh, Bledsoe, Drew Bledsoe and the uh, Bills uh, off to a serious start. And look what Miami did in the first two quarters versus what they've done here in the third and the fourth. Drastic reduction. 
First down, and the ball batted back to Testaverde, who knocks it to the turf. Testaverde's pass is incomplete. Looks like he was going to go downfield to Moss again. Outstanding pass protection. Vinny has all sorts of time to survey, survey the field, but Wally Agunlier gets up and knocks it down. Again, I talked earlier, this is uh, some complement of fast and quick and agile defensive ends and Agunlier and Jason Taylor on the other side. I saw that Staten Island Ferry. Agunlier used to take that after he played his high school football. Doesn't even get a chance to catch it. Zach Thomas, uniform to uniform. What else is happening? Let's go to Jim Nance. Well, it's the same old thing for Priest Holmes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Almost automatic inside the five. Holmes has two touchdowns on the day. It's 35-20 as we start the fourth quarter at Arrowhead. Back to Dick and Dan. All right, Jim. That old right. student body right, Dick Vermeil, using the USC plan. Okay, Boy, they go right. wide really well. Does the term tried and true come to mind? <laughs> they can score that team. Second, third down and ten for Testaverde. And they've got him for the first time today. Jason Taylor and Jay Williams from the two sides pinch Testaverde. Well, if they just didn't have such a big negative play, it might have been in a field position where they might have gone for it on fourth down, but not after this. No way after giving up this large of a, of a loss can you afford to try to go for it on fourth down. That looks like a half a sack each for Taylor and Williams, yeah. and it would be Jason Taylor's first uh, half sack of the season after those 18 and a half a year ago. Rogers back at the 15. Straczynski to punt. Beautiful high kick. Rodgers lets it go. And the Jets will down it at the five yard line. 7 23 left in the fourth quarter. Miami leading 21 10. Watch this hold. Terrell Buckley, look at that. He just grabs Jamie Henderson by the back of the jersey on the far side of the field, drags him down, and gets away with it. From the five-yard line, Miami with a 21-10 lead here in the middle of the fourth quarter, and it's Ricky Williams out to the eight-yard line. Number 34, Ricky Williams. Let's go to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, as you watch Miami's defense on the bench, you can see all they're thinking about is the next time they have the chance to get on the field. Dave Wanstead brought a game up from last year. He said, remember when we played the Chargers and we were so worried about LaDainey and Tomlinson? He said, my team only missed three tackles that day. They did not have focus against Houston. It is completely the opposite reaction today. They have steely-eyed faces on that bench. Yeah, that's right, Bonnie. Uh, missed tackles equate to losing football games. That's pretty basic rule. Ricky Williams out to the 15. That'll be Ricky close Williams for a first down. Gives us a chance to take a look at the numbers. Rushing yards, a dominant running game for the Dolphins, led by Ricky Williams. And the passing game, the Jets getting some big plays from Chester Verde and Santana Moss on the receiving end. And two weeks in a row that uh, the New York Jets, as we see them losing in every statistic, really have to be disappointed in their running game. Curtis Martin only able to run the ball 15 times for 48 yards in the opener. That loss to the Redskins, and now another non-productive day. Today, 10 for 32. First down, Ricky Williams. Hit at the line of scrimmage and maybe a half yard on that play. Chester McLaughlin, one of those to throw 300 pounds plus, plus at uh, Ricky Williams. He's down to about 340. Miami, we showed you earlier their beautiful record in the month of September, and as you can see, uh, they don't like to get off bet to bad starts only have, they've only done it one time in the last 33 years 1988 they started 0 and 2 on second and nine with the clock running at 520 Williams gets outside have plenty of green shirts there to bring him down at the 16. Let's go back to Jim Nance and this update. All right, after rookie Kyle Bowler was pulled because of a helmet to the thigh injury, Chris Redman fumbled on his first snap and set up this play right here. The Browns' first touchdown of the season. Kevin Johnson from Kelly Holcomb. Three-point game. Ravens in front. Final seconds, third quarter. Back to you, Boy, they were uh, 
hungry of those Browns fans for just a touchdown. Finally get one. And we have a timeout. New York in the clock with 5-10 left to go. Third and nine facing Jay Fiedler and the Miami Dolphins. Fiedler who grew up in Long Island. In fact, uh, just 20 minutes or so away from Vinny Testaverde as a New York roots. He said as a kid he rooted for the Jets and Ken O'Brien and Freeman McNeil and those teams. Now trying to beat him. Three wides and Ricky Williams. Ooh, dangerous pass complete short yardage to tight end Randy McMichael and the Jets will get the ball. But I like the fact that Ted Cottrell decided to force the issue and he comes with a blitz. He's coming with everybody up the middle and he's got that means you're going to have the quick support and the tight coverage and Sam Garns that time exactly what he had. That's no time to sit back and let the Dolphins dictate. Go ahead and you be the dictator. Santana Moss, dangerous return man, and Royals has uh, come close to having one block today, standing at his five. Four and a half minutes left. Driving kick toward the sidelines to Moss. Eludes the first man and then ducks out of bounds. A flag is down, however. That was really a good job by Royals of pinning Moss up against the sideline. You don't want to give it to him out there anywhere near the hash marks. The closer you can get him to a sideline, the more effective of a punt that is. Yeah, sidelines becomes part of the defense yep. as Jacoby Shepard. Illegal block in the back. Number three, number 23 of the receiving team going to return. Look to be Jacoby Shepard 32 23 with Jamie Henderson. There it is right there taking place in the back. Tonight on CBS 60 Minutes, Johnny Cash, the man, the artist, the legend, profiled as only 60 Minutes can tonight after football. Then it's without a trace at a special time, followed by the CBS Sunday movie, Out of Sight. It stars George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez. It's all here tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. And coming up next, the second half of our doubleheader. Check your local listings. New England and Philadelphia off to one starts. Big game in Philly. First down trailing by 11 the Jets 419 left complete to Quebec. first down at the 43 Sam Madison the tackler and now we'll get a hurry up out of the Jets get up to that line as quickly as you can and the clock now to four minutes left going with only three guys up front but then comes junior underneath to prevent side steps and then is twisted down at the 48 Madison again see it's not a blitz if you only have three guys and then you have a linebacker come even though it looks like a blitz anything that is just a four man rush is just a standard front back four of uh, Sammy Knight and and uh, Brock Marion, the two safeties really playing deep now, and Zach Thomas drifts back. Complete to Moss, and there's Thomas. That's how deep he was making the tackle at the 34-yard line. First down, 3.15 to go. Well, the Miami Dolphins playing a lot more zone this year than they ever have before. And sometimes they're making some mistakes along the way, and receivers are finding some pretty big holes, something you're not used to seeing in the Miami secondary. Jets have two timeouts left. Unable to hang on to the pass in front of Patrick Sertan. Stops the clock at 2.57. Junior Seau, there he's getting a head start. I'd say he's picked up. <laughs> Pretty good job by Brent Smith, the right guard. He just sends Junior sailing over the pile. That's uh, that's the risk when you blitz up the middle. Sometimes you end up leaving as quickly as you arrive. <laughs> Ready? Searching, throwing, incomplete. Moss had that one. So Tan on the coverage, and that's a couple of balls that uh, Moss thought he should have caught. Yeah, along with everyone else. 
Santana Moss. Uh, Vinny, look at that. Oh, that actually pressed her hand. Actually got his right hand on that. Take a check that back. That Sertan gets a hand on that and deflects the ball up into the upper shoulder pads of Santana Moss. A big play yeah. by the man who made the Pro Bowl for the first time last year. Played his college ball at Southern Mississippi and he gives the Dolphins that great package of Madison on one side and Sertan the corner on the other. Third and ten. Open, but not quite connecting. And we're going to get a holding call, Dick, against the Jets. They're going to get Jason Fabini against Jason Taylor. Jets, the Fabini. Team. Fabini has done a good job on Taylor today. So it's fourth and holding ten. 69. Offense. Still third down. They'll take the. 10 yard penalty and make it third and 20. Well, you know, they want to move them back out of field goal range. I'll be at a long field goal, but back them up. Sorry to say, the Jets uh, and Herman Edwards, and it's testimony to how well he coaches and the discipline of the team. If you add uh, this year's statistic to the last two, they're the least penalized team in the NFL. Had only one penalty in the game at Washington to start the season, four today. Sertan has his first interception of the year, his 19th career, and that'll just about to do it for the Jets and Herman Edwards. 2.37 to go. It's no surprise at 39 years old if you can get Vinny to move. That initially, good protection, but Vinny has nowhere to go, can't find a receiver, and at this stage of the game, look at it, he knew the minute he threw it. Did you? When's the last time you saw a quarterback throw a ball and immediately... Go, watch Vinny. Watch him right after he throws it. Oh, no, no. no. He knew the minute he let it go, it went right to him. But Vinny's just trying to make something happen. The Miami secondary took everything away prior to that. I, I, I think Vinny, I, I, he gave it what he had to give. Yeah, he did. Two timeouts left plus the two-minute warning for the Jets. Williams to the 36 yard line and the Jets will spend one of those two timeouts exactly two and a half minutes to go Patrick Sertan happy man with his interception when you're 0 and 2 Dix you're 0 and 2 but I have to say this about Vinny Testaverde don't drop this loss at his doorstep the, the, the lack of a running game has really hurt the Jets and I, I think Vinny played the quarterback position today well enough to, to win if he had some help. He made some uh, really very accurate and uh, difficult throws. Yeah. And those are 24 for 38, nearly 300 yards. As he approaches the 40,000 in his next game, he'll have enough yards undoubtedly to pass the 40,000 yard mark. Uh, no, no mean feat in this uh, National Football League. In fact, uh, he'll be in the top what, four or five. Well, there it is, ninth. Just ninth. It's the same Man old story, it. though. The, the last play is the one that counts, and yeah, that will stick with him all week. Ricky Williams, and uh, the Jets will spend their final time out here, and they have the two-minute warning coming up. Well, the Jets, you know, they they're used to this. Sadly, they start slowly and they've had terrific finishes. How about last year? One and four. They were two and five, in fact, and one uh, wound up winning the AFC East. Yeah, the nine and seven, of course, that's where two other teams finished nine and seven as well. And the fourth team's eight and eight. Such a spirited young man out of Marshall, and he was trying to fire up his teammates using his good hand and protecting that broken left wrist. Yeah, well, I got news for Chad. That broken left wrist is his non-throwing hand. He doesn't need to break a finger slapping somebody on a helmet with his passing hand, but hey, that's the kind of unbridled enthusiasm the guy has. Third and four. Ricky Williams, who else? And he moves the pile close, but about a half yard short of the first down, and they'll run the clock down to the two minute timeout. And it'll be fourth and a yard. 
And the Jets apparently will get another chance for the football. But you know, you look back in the game, and you can. <laughs> how about the time when they were down on the three, fourth and goal at the three, and you go for it for a touchdown or a field goal? Didn't uh, went for the touchdown. Seemed to be the. Right. The popular call that Herm Edwards made but now he'd like to have that three points in his pocket and be within a touchdown and a two point conversion of tying the game. We're going to see how close Miami is to a first down looks about another football and a half. And they'll run the clock to the two minute. Warning time. As soon as Johnny Greer winds it up. Three long touchdown drives for the Miami Dolphins that led to touchdowns and this 21 10 lead and we're at the two minute timeout. And, and, and yet it's it's the lack of a running game that's really hurt the Jets uh, so far and of course it, 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 until they can break Curtis loose. It's not they're not going to get they're not going to get any relief Santana Moss a very difficult over the shoulder catch down to the 13 and we go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Well Dick I think it's safe to say at this point the junior say passionate speech to his teammates before the game has paid off. He said you have to understand football is only a game if you win if you lose it's a business and you have to watch film all week and you're miserable. But Dave wants to just a few seconds ago a quick reminder to his to his players the game's not over yet you got to finish it off. All right, so Junior, who says uh, respect comes from the everyday walk. The everyday walk means you get respect when you're in the weight room and when you practice, and then when you play. And he's been that kind of guy throughout his career. He, his passion is uh, so obvious, and he is a it, inspirational sort. Pass to Bernie to the sidelines. The soul trying to get out of bounds does not. And the Jets have no more time out. I know that the Jets rushing total is skewed a little bit because they've been behind so much and have to play catch up. But still uh, here's one for you. Curtis Martin has only 21 yards rushing today. Jay Fiedler has 35. Now coming into this game I don't think the Jets anticipated Curtis Martin being outrushed by Jay Fiedler. Illegal hands to the face. Number 69. Offense. Still first down. Fabini ticketed again, so that'll take it back inside uh, the 10 yard line to the 7 yard line. But, yeah, and you have to ask the question, Dan, with Curtis Martin, who's been a brilliant player. Is it is it lack of blocking a lack of offensive line or is maybe he just doesn't have the spurt that he wants on. to the 30 yard line and the first down. Well I, today I'm going to give credit to the Miami defense. Now, uh, this is an outstanding this defense. Let's face it. This isn't really a big shock today. The Miami Dolphins have more good football players than do the New York Jets. So they should win this game especially given what happened to them last week. Look at that underhand pass to Lamont Jordan. Uh, just an underhand sling for 17 yards to the 47 yard line. Rob Burnett was in the backfield. Look at that. Vinny being a little creative. <laughs> Under one minute to go. 55 seconds left. Sideline almost intercepted. As Sam Madison all over that pass. Well, the key for Miami today, they had great balance. They were running the football on the ground. There's an example of Jay Fiedler taking it in for a touchdown. They were doing a good job passing that time to McMichael for a score. But of course, the hammer was coming at the Jets all day long, Ricky Williams. Finally, the Jets getting it to 21-10. If you look at Ricky Williams when uh, Vinny Testaverde hit Santana Moss 32 yards for a touchdown. Vinny only 11 more yards to hit 40,000. And he's going to get it right here. Lamont Jordan gets much more than that in a first down at the 33 yard line. Written down by Zach Thomas. So a significant throw for Testaverde, an apparent defeat, 40,000 yards in his. Great first career that started at Tampa Bay as I hope no first one player asked, pick. I hope nobody asked him in the postgame <laughs> press conference how much that meant to him. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years from now, it'll mean something. Yeah, I don't. Given the fact that they suffered a loss today, I think Benny's 
not going to have much to do with 40,000 yards. And he's going to down this one to try to save one last play, and he'll get it with eight seconds, maybe a couple of throws. And uh, this is the company that he keep, keeps uh, uh, with now at 40,000 yards. Uh, Dan Marino, the old timer. John Elway, 51 plus. How about Warren Moon? That's just in the NFL. The scrambler, Fran Tarkenton. Dan Fouts at 43,000. Brett Favre still going at 42. And Joe Montana and Johnny Unitas. That is some solid Hall of Fame company. Well, of that, of that group, and we'll see what happens here, Dick. Of that group, the one that really jumps out at me is Johnny Unitas with 40,000 yards. Because that was not a pass-happy National Football League when Johnny Unitas played. And the season was 12 games yeah. long. <laughs> the rules have been changed. It's a whole lot easier to throw the football than it was when Johnny Unitas was throwing it to, to Raymond Berry. Uh, it's uh, what an accomplishment by Unitas to get 40,000 yards. Number 69. Offense. Still third down. Now having said that, congratulations to Vinny. He does enjoy he does enjoy uh, uh, entering a really exclusive fraternity and it's well deserved. Another penalty on Fabini. A tough uh, quarter for him his third uh, 10 yard penalty. So at the 41 yard line last play of the game unless and they'll spread it out and so will the defense of the Dolphins. All the way back to the 10 yard line. And then they throw underneath to Lamont Jordan. And Jack Thomas can't get him. Now he gets him from behind. And that's the end of the game. Now the Jets rack up a lot of passing yards late, but in a meaningless effort at uh, the final minutes of this game as Dave Wanstead and Herman Edwards meet at midfield. The Jets 0 and 2, Miami. One and one, and uh, the sky isn't falling in South Florida after all. No, Chicken Little can go back inside. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay Fiedler uh, returned with all of his uh, family, his parents here to cheer him on, a Long Island native. Meets with uh, Chad Pennington. And the uh, AFC East. Uh, Moves on to week number three, but we'll move on to the second game of our doubleheader and the NFL today with all the scores and highlights just across the river in downtown Manhattan. Jay Fiedler ran for a touchdown and ran like a big fullback, and he threw for another and engineered some long drives as the Miami Dolphins have their first win of the season, 21-10, here at the Meadowlands against Vinny Testaverde and the New York Jets.